Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of Straight Talk on Photography. I am Adam Welch and we're going to change it up a little bit today. Uh, well, I'll tell you what, I'm not going to be one of those guys that makes you watch the whole video to find out who won the last month's giveaway. Um, if you didn't join us for that video, we're giving away a nice little tripod from KNF Concept, the TM2534T. Got it right on the first try that time. And the way we're going to do this, uh, I'll tell you what. I'll make you wait for just a second because I'm going to announce this month's giveaway, February's giveaway, and how you can get in on that. For February, we're giving away two Luxie light meter attachments. They clip right onto your cell phone. There's an app you can download. Um, these are some re review pieces from quite a while ago. I did a review on them. It works actually pretty well for what it is. If you need a light meter all the time, Luxie, pretty good way to go. The way you want to win these, uh, last month we had the stipulation of either if you're a current subscriber, Go ahead and like or comment on the video, or if you didn't subscribe, shame on you. Go ahead and subscribe, and I'm going to enter you into the contest. But I didn't know that YouTube did not let you see uh, private accounts that subscribe to you. So if you subscribe and you have a private account, uh, just comment, and you'll be entered into the contest. Or if you already subscribe, comment on the video below, and I will enter you into next month's contest to win, or this month's contest, to win the Luxie Light Meter. Now, and before I get ahead of myself, what we're going to be talking about today is large format photography, one of my guilty pleasures. I'm going to tell you a little bit more about it in just a second. And hey, you know, you may learn something you didn't know already. It's going to be a brief overview of a lot of the stuff you may or may not have known about large format and why it is so incredible. Okay, without any more gilding of the lily, what I have done, I have given everyone that was visible to me anyway, everyone who subscribed, or everyone who commented on the last video a number and it was a lot of people entered into this like I said I'm sorry some of the private uh, private YouTube uh, folks that I can't see I apologize like I said maybe you'll have uh, better luck with this coming giveaway the way I've got it set up but we have 54 total participants and I am going to leave this up to a very special person to me Alexa choose a number between 1 and 54 your random number between 1 and 54 is 49. 49. So your number 49 is down there close to the bottom. We're going to count up. There's 54, 53, 52, 51, 50. There's number 49. Dan Osick. I hope you're getting, I hope I'm getting your name right, Dan. Dan Osick. Uh, if you would send me a message and I will send you your tripod from KNF Concept. You're the winner, congratulations. And there again, everybody, just about every month here at Straight Talk on Photography, I'm giving something away. Comment, or if you already subscribe, comment on the video, or if you don't subscribe, subscribe to my channel, and make sure your account is pr uh, public so I can see you. So now on to the good stuff, or as far as I think, the good stuff. And we are talking about large format cameras, like I said just like that. Large format is really considered any kind of photography, uh, film or digital. Uh, as I know, there's no real consumer grade large format digital backs, which would probably cost an arm and a kidney. But uh, four by five is considered um, kind of the lower end of large format. It goes up literally indefinitely. There's eight by 10 large formats, five by sevens, uh, 11 by 14s, and higher than that, if you can believe some of these cameras are monsters. This is a piece of four by five film. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit more about the film in a second, but I wanted to show you this one, and this one, of course, has already been exposed, so I wouldn't have it out in the light. That shows you the size of the negative that you're dealing with, and when you put that in terms of full-frame DSLRs, uh, which are based on 35 millimeter film, 35 millimeter approximately diagonal, that's a big fucking negative. So a lot of resolution, and that really is the reason why a lot of people, myself included, got into large format photography. In this video, we're gonna talk about some of the basic parts and how you can probably get into this for a lot less than you think. Probably gonna drag you to the dark side here. So let's open up my camera. And look how beautiful this thing is. We're gonna move outside in just a second. I'm gonna show you some more of the movements. But uh, this thing opens up, kind of like an accordion. These are the bellows. This thing opens up just like that. Lock him down. There's some basic parts to a large format camera. You have the front and rear, what they call standards. There's a lot of movements to this. You can do tilt, shift, swings, that kind of thing. Really the term tilt, shift is born out of large format. The back here, 
ground glass. That's what you actually look through and you see the image that you're working with. And a lot of other little things on here that I'm gonna show you in a second. But I wanna cover uh, the biggest thing about large format. This camera, I bought it a couple years ago. Probably paid more than I should because I really didn't know exactly what I was buying, but it was a good price. But I wanna show you exactly what is in between where the lens goes and where the film goes. It's nothing, it's just air, so it's a wooden box. So when you're out looking for a large format camera, don't think you have to spend two or $3,000 to get a quality camera because it all comes down on how the movements work, that kind of thing, that can raise or lower the price, but there's nothing in between the damn thing. So I hadn't really understood exactly how these people are charging so much for large format cameras. So that's just my opinion though. Now that was kind of a rundown of the camera, very brief. Uh, let's talk about the kind of lenses this thing uses. Um, there aren't any different per se from a regular camera lens. You can see right through it. Other than they have a, this one has a Copal One shutter. It's sandwiched in between the front and the rear elements. So the shutter is a mechanism that is in between the lens and everything is contained here with a lens board. This goes on the front of the camera. The aperture is controlled very smoothly with an aperture dial. This one goes all the way to F45, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, F45, this is a 5.6 to F45, 210 millimeter Schneider. Excellent little lens. And when you get into large format, the F numbers, like a F5.6 lens on a regular camera, like a DSLR or something like that, wouldn't be considered that fast, but you have to think about the relationship between the film, or in the other case, like the image sensor, the film and the lens, there's a divergence there's a lot of geometry and some uh, optics that go on there, but 5.6 is actually fairly fast for a large format lens. Now, what else can I tell you before moving outside? Well, really nothing. Oh, well, no, hey, let me back up just a second. Go back to the film. The 4x5 film is held in this. It's a 4x5 film holder, and it's kind of archaic when you think about it because this is a front and back holder, so two shots. And when you think about a digital camera now, you know, this camera I'm filming on now has got about 1,900 shots on a uh, 64 gigabyte memory card. So it's kind of weird, but it forces you to slow down. And I could talk forever about slowing down in photography, that kind of thing, being intentional, but I'm gonna spare you today. And I'm just gonna show you how this works. Dark slide on either end, either side rather. Four by five piece of film, notches up top when these notches face you in the upper right hand corner stage left uh, or stage right rather whatever it is that means the emulsion side is towards you and the emulsion side has to be facing out in the film holder to be facing out in the camera towards the lens to make an exposure so you slide the dark slide down open the end flap did i mention this is all done in complete darkness by the way film slides in like that light is green trap is clean anyway that's how you load a 4x5 film holder. This film holder goes in the back. You compose your shot, which I'm gonna show you there again in just a second. Compose your shot on the ground glass, get everything done. Close the shutter, cock the shutter, get all your settings on there. Slide this into the back of the camera. Pull your dark slide, which exposes the film. Click, make your exposure, replace the dark slide, and then go back and develop it if you're like me in your uh, glorious bathroom dark room. Okay, enough of all that business. Let's go outside real quick. I'm gonna show you a few more movements on the camera while there's still daylight. All right, well, such as it is here in Tennessee, the weather decided not to cooperate. All of a sudden started raining, but we're not gonna let a little thing like that stop us. So out of my back door here, my neighbor's gonna love this. I'm gonna show you a few basic movements with a large format camera and why it is so really amazing even now. Let's start off again when you have the uh, front standard, this thing in front that the lens connects to. You have a thing called rise and fall. I'll loosen these up here. And all it is is where the front standard, where the lens is, can literally rise and fall and it can uh, help you compose without actually having to move the camera around or move your tripod. Another thing we have here is a thing called front and rear tilt. That's rear tilt. There's front tilt. It's literally the same thing I said with the tilt shifts, the lenses you get now, like the miniaturization kind of thing, can all be done and we're born from large format. You also have something called swing. Loosen that up, swing left to right. And a lot of these movements are for really correcting uh, distortion. Uh, you know, lines, buildings, architecture, anything where you want to manipulate how the depth of field 
is uh, presented to the film. This is how you do it. Moving back here to the rear standard, kind of the same thing. And a lot of large formats, uh, format cameras, they're going to vary uh, with their movement. So, I mean, this is kind of general stuff. Some do less, some do more. You're going to have front tilt, rear tilt, kind of the same thing as with the front. And then down here, you're going to have the swing knobs and it is going to be able to swing all that kind of stuff. This one doesn't have rear standard rise and fall, which is fine. But uh, aside from the actual focus in here, that is all there is. Let me just run that out for you. Or all that you really need to know to get going in large format is the uh, few movements that I've showed you there. I'm gonna move the camera around here, the video camera around in just a second to show you an actual live view through the ground glass. Oh, but first, uh, I'm gonna swing it around a little bit to you. Actually, I guess I could just do this right now and show you the front of the camera and the lens and how you actually set an exposure. Just as with any other type of photography, the exact same rules are going to apply to you. Well, not rules, but guidelines as far as exposure goes, and that is going to be aperture, shutter speed, uh, and ISO. And in our case, the ISO is going to be controlled by the actual film speed, the type of film we use that we're going to talk about in just a second. But the aperture of this lens, and on most large format lenses, are controlled by the aperture slider, just like that. That went from 5.6 to there to f45. To set the exposure, sound of the same thing. The shutter is actually, as I said, built in between the lens. So all you're going to do is go down just like this. There's, let's say, 1 60th of a second. There's one second. And this shutter goes all the way to 1 1 400th of a second. And of course we have bulb mode, which is just like a regular uh, DSLR. You hit the shutter button, the shutter is going to stay open until you hit that button again. And then you have the actual timed exposure. If I hold down the shutter and don't let off of it, it will stay open indefinitely until I depress the shutter. And the shutter button over here, there's a plunger that I could attach to this, but the shutter is right over there. And when you cock it and close it, there we go. That's how you actually release the shutter. So very simple on the front end as far as actually setting an exposure, just the basic principles of photography will go a long way there. All right, this is the fun part. This is what I really wanted to get around to show you new, showing you when I started this video. Uh, something you don't see a lot in these types of uh, tutorials or uh, videos in general is the actual back of the camera, the ground glass here, seeing what the photographer sees underneath the dark cloth. And the first thing you will notice right off the bat Shit's upside down. Yeah, you have to compose these kind of things um, with the whole world flipped over on you. So let's just get right down to it. You can bring the image in and out of focus, just like that. Front or rear standards does kind of the same thing. Then you get into your movements. Here is going to be that rise and fall again of the front standard, just like that. And then we're going to get into some tilts and you can actually enlarge or shrink relatively the background. And then like I said, you get into those swing movements here with the front standard. You can do some kind of funky stuff with your perspective, depending on what you're actually shooting and why. Very cool. And you know, large format, when you get into the sharpness, um, everything considered, it's a cool thing to get into. It's kind of like polo, you know, if you have the balls for it. So anyway, that's the really the scary stuff to do with large format photography. Really not that bad, guys. Now let's say we've got everything set up how we want it. We've got our composition set here with the ground glass at the back. We've got our aperture, our shutter speed, all that stuff set up front. So now we're ready to make a picture. So let's just, you know, like I said, for the sake of doing it, show you exactly how you would go about this. The first thing, shut your shutter. Like I said, if you, there's nothing in between the lens and the ground glass. So if you just stick a uh, film holder in there, pull the dark slide, it's gonna expose the film. And like I said, I'll go ahead and cock the shutter here. This is our trusty film holders we looked at earlier. You wanna take the film holder, Open up the back, slide in the holder, center, perfect. Now the film is in there, but it's not able to be exposed yet because the dark slide is still in there. I'm going to pull out the dark slide. So everything's set to go, moment of truth. 
make our picture, put the dark slide back. Usually you can turn it over. They have a white and a dark side so you don't get things mixed up. Like I said, sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. Pull that out and there you have it. So yeah, everybody, I hope you have enjoyed this quick and dirty uh, introduction to large format film photography. It's really not that bad. And like I said, it doesn't have to be that expensive. It's something that you can make cost as much or really as little as you want, depending on what you do. And speaking of that, going back to the film, some film that I happen to use right now, uh, I'm a big Ilford guy. Got some Ilford HP5 here. It's a 400 speed. Also use some Ilford Delta 100 speed. Uh, great films, both of those, but it can be not really expensive, but get a little pricey, especially if you're just starting out. So what I would actually recommend and what I am trying now, haven't shot with it yet, is this Arista 100 speed, Arista EDU Ultra. Uh, essentially same price for 50 sheets of this as for 25 sheets of the Ilford. Like I said, Ilford's great. Arista is a little bit cheaper. I've heard it's equally great. I'm going to find out for myself. So that's a nice way, like, you know, get on eBay, scour around for cameras. Don't spend just an arm and a leg for your first large format camera. If I could offer some advice to you, there's a lot of really low cost options there. Look for some of the gray flexes, uh, speed graphics, depending on the condition, you can have one of those for like 250 bucks if you wanted to. So um, that's definitely a way to go. Again, if you like this kind of video, I can talk about film literally all day as i said it is a guilty pleasure of mine uh post in the comments if you want to see more i can take you into my dark room slash bathroom slash brewery slash everything else back there that i actually developed my film to show you exactly how easy it is to develop your own film at home and really how uh, inexpensive it is to get some extremely extremely high quality negatives that rival any kind of digital camera on the market today. Again, congratulations to our January contest winner, Dan Ausick. Dan, like I said, shoot me a message on here with your contact information, your shipping address, and I will get your tripod out to you as soon as possible. No charge for shipping, by the way. And everybody, again, stick around, uh, subscribe to the channel, comment on the video, because this month, we're going to be giving away the Luxie and the Luxie for All that fits on, the, they're a little bit older, like I said, I think it fits on the 5S iPhone that should fit work for anything, but the Luxie for all will work essentially on any kind of smartphone to uh, turn it into a light meter. All right, everybody. Thank you so much for joining me on Straight Talk on Photography. Again, this is Adam Welch. Like, subscribe the video, comment, support the uh, channel. I really appreciate it. And like I said, at least once a month, I'm giving away some kind of photo related gear. Thanks a lot, everybody. The way we're going to <clears throat> stop that again. Congratulations to our January for uh... okay. <laughs>